Uh, we'll begin by talking about something very small here that uh, this boy Elisha was sharing. I don't know whether it's after another kind of thing, but uh, when the church talks about such things, they we term them with different names. We call them enemies of the church, we call them whatever we want to call them, but amazingly, the world is seeing, the non the people are seeing what is happening in the church, and they are concerned. The, 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 the non safety community is concerned about what is happening in the church community. And for us who are going through the whole thing, we are quiet about the whole matter. But I pray that we may wake up. Because some of the people Elisha was mentioning, they have been rumored of being engaged in gay stuff and all of that. But now, some of them who are being mentioned by him, they have not been known for that. But the truth is, when you investigate some things, you realize that uh, there is a truth related. I, I've ever told you people that I, I saw a video in which Bugembe was singing on a gay party, on a gay party, on a gay wedding. Bugembe as the guest artist of the gay party. Now, when you look into the whole matter related, you will realize something is wrong. Because I have told you people always that if you were a pastor or you were born again, and in your church, men are having dreads on their head, they are plating the hair, they are tinting the hair, they are doing all those female uh, kind of workings on the hair, you just know your church is gay. And the people have always said I'm judgmental. But this is not being judgmental. This is being realistic. This is being truthful. This is being genuine. You see, those things we make on our hair, even women, we are not meant to deform our hair like that. There are some things women do nowadays, and you look and say, no, this is not godly. What if they are being done by men now? That's what is written in the book of First Corinthians, I mean, uh, Romans chapter 1, I think. Whereby the Bible says they changed the, the nature of God to what is not nature. So this is time that church should wake up to know that something is wrong in our midst. Defending, fighting, arguing may not change anything. I have told you that Having players of keyboard, guitarists, drumists, we call them instrumentalists, and some call them DJs who work on sound. When they are having pins in the ears, some of the bodyguards of the men of God have got ear pins, have got bangles on their hands, they have worked on hair, you know, all that they are a sign that something is gay. So if you are in this group hearing my voice and uh, you have in your church people who are doing such things, maybe they are doing ignorantly, but if they cannot listen to advice, they just let them just know that they are doing gay life. Also, if you are the one who is having those long hairs, you are wearing necklaces, chains in the, the neck, and you are a man, you are gay. Though you may not be doing homosexuality directly, but you are promoting gayism, you are an agent of homosexuality. So let us wake up as a church and know our limits. Not everything was for the church. Not everything was for the church. This man mentioned something to do with the Elvis Mbonye. 
and rumors have come out, have been moving rumors have been moving that uh, these people are preaching the grace gospel that tells people that God has no concern about your lifestyle. God has nothing to do with your lifestyle. He's much concerned about your faith. And the leader has been gymming, doing all that. You know, he has plated his hair. You can see a man having such plated hair, you know. And I, I, I was wondering why a man of God at a level of Umbonye would be plating the hair. A man who says he's an equivalent of Jesus. And that is already blasphemy. You can't blaspheme God to that level and say you're a man of God. So pastors who have tinted the hair, plated the hair, draided the hair, and all styles of hair, my dear, you a man and you have those things in your head, you are gay. So be careful. If you are hearing this voice and you get offended, you are getting offended for no reason. You are just getting offended for no reason. The truth is something is wrong. Now, he mentioned something to do with uh, Tom Mugerwa. And he said, you know, because he is a, a, a spiritual son to Robert Kayanja, for him, he says he must be also in agreement with the gay. Whereby his assumption might be according to what he thinks. Because for me, I consider spiritual lineage. I consider spiritual lineage. Uh, gayism or homosexuality as a habit may not affect the son if the father is in the habit. Habit, habit like the habit of, of sexual immorality when the, the man is adulterous. When you are sitting under an adulterous pastor, it doesn't make you adulterous. Likewise, if you are sitting under a gay pastor and that man is not gay because he uses gay powers for religion, but he just has a weakness of falling for fellow men. Such a pastor will need to repent. And if he repents, God will forgive. So you who is under him, if he is not compromising the preaching, uh, about gayism, then you are not affected. But there are people under the sun who sold their souls to the devil, and now they serve the devil through gayism. You understand? They serve the devil through gayism. Like the brothers, the singers in this country, the brothers who were on stage dancing and kissing each other. Those ones are slaves of the devil who are used by the devil to promote Satanism. Also, when you look at many like uh, some of them who have been mentioned in the order above, they are people who are into Satanism and they are promoting Satanism. So church, we wake up and understand what to do. Let us stop defending things because we, we want to defend. I'm not saying that Elisha is true in everything he's speaking, but some of the people he's mentioning, you have heard rumors about them. Some of them you have seen videos, some of them you have heard audios, some of them now the, phone, the, the telephone contacts are trending. The contact with someone whose name is trending. You know, something is not right. Trending, but it is out of court. So something is not right. So let us pray that the body of Christ be rejuvenated in Jesus' name. I am your servant, Apostle Wilfred Mangeni, from Original Truth Ministries International that is located in Chitezi along Kawaga Road in the name of Jesus. We are believing God for the radio ministry, and I request you if you can support in any way that we may carry the truth back to the radio. 
program of power of the foundation that we may talk about the foundation of salvation as we are talking about it here so if you have any heart of support or whenever you talk about the thing you feel something in your heart telling you to do something about it but sometimes you forget or you ignore or you take slow please act this is the very time we don't want to reach apple before we begin this so let us pray that the grace of god may enable us to do what is right in the name of jesus hallelujah so i'm talking about the foundation of our salvation this is very serious uh, matthew chapter 10 is where i'm beginning from verse 16 to 18 and we shall read 21 to 27. the bible says the world i send you forth as sheep in the midst of the wolves be ye therefore wise as serpents and the ramblers as doves now what jesus is saying here is calling his followers the sheep and he is sending them amidst the wolves we are the sheep and what are the wolves the world jesus is calling the church the sheep and the world are being called wolves now there is a, a witch doctor who called himself a pastor but later admitted he was a witch and gave his church to the leaders of witch doctors in uganda uh, uh, he gave the church to Aligawesa Jumba Ruboa. So now Jumba Ruboa is the one leading that church. The so called pastor is now serving as a puppet. However, this guy says that for him, he does not lead the sheep. He tells people, You are not a sheep. Uh, you are not a sheep. If you were a sheep, you are not meant to be here. He is very true. Sometimes the Satan speaks openly and we fail to understand. If you are not a sheep, then you are a wolf. Can somebody understand me? If you don't belong to the sheep, then you belong to the wolves. So the one who was speaking was a wolf. So he was saying you are not a sheep. If you were a sheep, you are in a wrong place. So there are wolves gather they are wolves the the followers preachers are wolves you know the non safety people are wolves because jesus terms them follow wolves because they will eat you they will eat you how will they eat you when you go to preach the gospel to the world you have to be careful even the daughters of god and the sons of god wherever you are living you have to be careful because the world where you are living, they don't want you to live the lifestyle of Jesus. They don't want you to live spiritually. The devil is in them, using them to devour you, to devour you spiritually. So when you are a girl child, be careful where you live because the boys around there will want you a safety girl to lose your salvation so be careful that's why the bible is saying the world are all of us though i'm sending you there but be wise as serpents and be harmless as doves in other words do not use force to fight them use wisdom to fight them so as a church we may not use force to to fight the the followers uh, prophets gay people those who come against us who want to engage us in activities that are not godly because we have to win them to christ we shall have to use wisdom not force that's what jesus told us now salvation as salvation our salvation is of a sheep according to jesus teaching he called us a sheep what is a sheep a sheep he referred to us to us as a sheep because of our innocency 
yeah, when we come in Christ, we become innocent. And also because of our humility to God, as a sheep listens to the voice of the master, so we listen to the voice of Christ, so we are sheep. So children of God, the Bible says, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of the world of sin. Uh, but be, be, be yet therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Now we as children of God, uh, since we have known that we are the sheep and the world are the wolves, we need to be careful how we live in the world and how we handle the things of the world because we may end up being devoured. And whenever a wolf bites you, it puts it is DNA in you. It puts it is venom inside of you. And the venom will begin to grow and turn you into a wolf also. Be careful. Because there is a when I still watch the films, the time when I used to watch films, there is a film I watched which was known as Underworld. This film was of Rikens and uh, vampires. Now, if one was a vampire and you were beaten by a Riken, or you were human and you were beaten by a Riken, you turn into Riken. Now, Riken is a werewolves. That when a werewolf bites you, you turn into a werewolf. You understand? So Jesus is talking about them here that be careful because you are sheep. When you go among the wolves, they will eat you. Now be careful. So we have seen many servants of God and the children of God who have gone into the world carelessly and they have been eaten by wolves. Like this one is being mentioned as gay. Now Bible says, but uh, be, be careful of men, beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils and they will scourge you in their synagogues. And ye shall be brought before the governors and the kings for my sake, for testimony against them and the Gentiles. Now let me speak to the preachers and the people who will rise up to preach. You may not be a preacher today. You might have gotten yourself the some few days ago, but you don't know what you will become in God. Even we who preach today, who are pastoring today, who are doing apostolic work today, we who are prophesying today, the days we got saved, we didn't know that we would do such a thing. For me, I went to church to get saved because I had demon disturbances. And I went through dance. I went to dance at the church. There was some music, so I went to dance me on the music. When I went to dance, they called the people who can get saved, and I knew I was being disturbed by demons. And they had preached that Jesus uh, is powerful and can help. They said Jesus is a tree. I can remember that gospel, and the preacher who preached that gospel in year 2003. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the preacher was saying Jesus is a tree, and when you eat from Jesus, you should not eat the leaves like uh, the locusts. You should eat the fruits if you are to benefit. You should eat the fruits of Jesus. So they preached that gospel of the fruits. What you eat from Jesus is what you produce. When you eat the fruits of Jesus, you will bear fruits of Jesus. That gospel was in the village, very deep villages of Busia. And uh, now there is such a gospel is no longer preached. We need to go back and preach that gospel again, such that people learn to know that when you are in Christ, focus about the fruit. So they taught about the fruits. And they said, when you eat Jesus, you become like him. The power in him, the working in him will work in you. So I said, okay, if that's the case, then the demons cannot stay in me. I went. God saved. So my intention of getting saved was to get delivered. But when I got saved, they continued to teach that there must be a reason why you got saved. God has a purpose to your salvation. So now I began to look for the purpose of God. And the purpose of God ended me in ministry. So even you who think you are not a preacher, you may be a preacher unknowingly. And a day will come when you will stand. A day will come when you will prophesy. A day will come when you will do the work of God. So do not say, 
what Apostle Wilfred preaches is for the mature people. For us, we are still young. You are young, but a day will come when you will mature. And you should not stay on the younger's food because when you mature, you will not know what to do. We advise children from childhood and teach them to do activities because when they mature, they will be important in life. When you mature, when you can't do anything in the kingdom, when you don't know what to do, then you will mess up the people of God. We have seen many who mature when they don't know what to do and they have ended up disturbing the body of Christ. So you have to mature when you know what to do. So listen to the gospel that I teach. Though you think it may be for the preachers, how do you know if you are going to be the greatest evangelist in the coming generation? How do you know if you will be the most true prophet of the coming generation? So listen to the word and learn with me in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, so children of God, we need to know that when the Lord saves you, he saved you and one day he expects you to further the work of the kingdom. So do not say that apostle preaches a very hard word. It's a, a word for the mature ones. For me, I'm still young. How long will you be younger, dear? Just wake up and be mature. Bible says, beware of men, for they will deliver you up into the councils, and they will uh, um, encourage you in it. They will scourge you in their synagogues, and you will be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. Now, according to the preaching of Jesus, Jesus says, when we testify his word, when we preach his gospel, his true gospel, the people of the world will not like it. In other words, they will get annoyed. They will feel bad when we preach because we have to preach against them can you listen jesus is saying when we go to preach we should preach against the deeds of the the men of the world be careful of men for they will deliver you up into the castles and they will whip you in their synagogues and you shall be brought before the governors and the kings for my sake, for the testimony against them and the Gentiles. You understand? So we have to testify Christ against the deeds that are done by the world. When we go to the crusade, we should not only preach what Christ can do for the people when they get saved. We should also testify Christ against their deeds. That's what the Bible is saying. Let the gospel that testify against the deeds of the world come back to the church. That's what they call going back to the foundation of Christ. My fellow preacher, please begin to preach against the things the world do. Homosexuality, preach against it. Do not preach only what Christ can do. Preach against the deeds of the world. Preach against the deeds of the world. Such that, you know, you, you align with what Christ expected from the preacher. Jesus expects the preacher to preach against the deeds of the world. That's what the, the Lord expects of us. Such that we tell the governors, the presidents, the, the ministers, the kings, you know, the LOC5, you know, the RDCs, the, the, the bad things they are doing. We tell the judiciary to come out of bribery, not to, to also to give them a bribe. We, the, 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 the SFDs, we also give them a bribe. You will find the preachers bribing the police, which is not right. You understand? So we are the ones to correct the governors. In other words, the people who are in the government, we are the ones to correct the government, not the government to correct us. President Museveni spoke a very shameful thing. You know, he said, you see these religious people, 
in yamu the one who guide the them now just imagine that president musavid guide is the religious people and when he talks about religious people he's talking about all religions including the safeties that he is the one who guiding us president Museven is guiding us that is a great shame on the church the church is the one to guide the president not the president to guide the church a non saved the president cannot guide the church the president can guide the church if himself is a, a church leader either a church eruda or a pastor but if if he is not a pastor he is not a church eruda he has to listen from pastors so pastors we are the ones to guide the ministers the members of parliament we are the ones to tell them what to do not them who tell us what to do but because we left the foundation of our salvation we are now f f fighting for things that don't benefit we have ended up needing correction from the government officials the bible tells us to obey the leaders that's very right we don't disobey them but they should not guide us we obey the laws they produce we obey the 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 setting the government system we obey it but as we the preachers we the children of god the government has to listen to our advice we are the ones to guide the government because we are the representatives of god and these leaders are leaders elected by god according to the bible though not all were given by god but at least uh, if they become leaders they are under God's authority. God is the one who can remove leaders and put others. Those things happen in other way. But still God remains the supreme over them. So as we, the people who have the spirit of God, the leaders have to be guided by us. We are the ones to see the future of the nation and they tell the government the future of the nation. Not the nation to tell us the future of the church. It is very absurd. So the Bible is saying, you will be taken to governors and kings for my sake. For the testimony against them, now when we preach, we don't need to preach with fear. We don't need to preach with a compromise. We have to preach the truth the way it is. We have to preach the gospel of Christ the way it is. Such that if the officials get offended, let them get offended, but the truth has to remain true. You understand? You have to preach the original truth, whereby even if the officials get offended, the gospel remains a gospel. Can you understand? And the brother shall deliver up a brother to death, and the father a child, and the children shall rise up against their parents, and choose them to be put to death. Why? Because there will be a difference. When you are preaching about against homosexuality and your brother is a gay and you are preaching against gayism and for him he gets money from gay, he will take you to be his enemy. And at the end of the story, you will contradict. When you are preaching against bribery and embezzlement and your father is one of the embezzlers of the gov government funds, he will turn against you. You understand? And you may also be arrested for speaking Karebule. They call it Karebule in Uganda. Speaking things you, you, you are not certain, you are not aware of. Because for them, they will forge their, their, uh, they will forge their testimonies and they testify against you. And you may end up being taken guilty when you are not. So all this Jesus said will happen. But ask yourself, how can such happen when we are preaching a gospel that pleases everybody? That now you preach a strategic gospel. They call it a, a gospel that cuts across. A gospel that cuts across. Cutting across, they mean you should preach a gospel that pleases the unsaved and also the saved, such that all the people are at peace with you. That's why in our churches, we always tell people that you come the way you are, 
they they say for this and the nanny say for this we shall the pastor you all calling the nanny say for the people to come to church is not bad let them come but when they come they have to be saved they have to be told the truth you don't preach a cut across gospel to leave those people in the nanny say for the religion and they're in your church for years and you have never told them that jesus would do take them to eternal life if they confess and you have never told them if they die without confessing they will go to hell you keep them there you know there are some churches where they don't confess salvation i have never seen these fellowships people confessing salvation like a Mbonye fellowship like the Fanero fellowship i don't know i have watched the tv i have seen audios i mean videos i have never seen any altar call any day I don't know whether Aruta Kolu is done at Fanero, but I have never seen any Aruta Kolu any day. You understand? So, like the Kubiri, the synagogue of all nations, they don't lead the people to salvation. They don't confess. You go there, you are Catholic, you remain Catholic. No wonder he's a Catholic father. You go there, you're Muslim, you remain Muslim. That's why some people say, I'm a saved Muslim. You can't be a saved Muslim. You will be either saved or not saved. If you are in this platform and you are a saved Muslim, a saved Catholic, a saved Protestant, you are a saved Adventist, you are not saved. You just need to align yourself with the Lord. Because that is the truth. So if such happen, and we keep preaching a cut across gospel, keeping people who are not saved in our churches, and we don't lead them to Christ, it will be judgment upon our lives. Because Jesus said these people will not like us. Why will they not like us? Because we shall preach against them. We shall preach against sexual immorality. We shall preach against materialism. We shall preach against uh, evil financial trades. We shall preach against their money deals. You understand? We shall preach against their deals. We shall preach against their political deals. Because there are a lot of political deals in Uganda. People who pretend to be oppositionists, when in reality, they are not oppositionists. They are just playing games to get money. They know entering politics will make me popular and I will make more money. So they join politics just to become popular and make more money. So when we preach against such things, these people will not like us. So that's why Jesus was saying that when you preach the gospel, preach this gospel and they, you, they will hate you. They will even, they may end up putting you to death. You shall be hated of all men for my name is sake. But he that endures to the end shall be saved. Now ask yourself, why would the old men hate us? Why would all men hate us if we do things that please them? We dress like them. We have hairstyles like them. We are having chains in the neck like them. We are wearing bangles like them. Do you understand? We are wearing miniskirts like them, walking naked like them. Ask yourself, how will they hate us in such a case? This, this preaching of Jesus shows us that as a church, we must have a difference from the world. Jesus is teaching, is showing us that as a church, we have to be different from the gay community. That's why we are saying, listen, child of God, just listen, child of God. Church, our lifestyle is meant to be different from the non the people. There are very few things we can be similar. But in the most cases, we are not made to be similar. We must be different. There must be a difference between us and the world. If we live a gay lifestyle, how do we prove the world that we are not of theirs? Those days, there are, there are some people who used to call uh, Sefudis who live aga na aga, who live in the boss lives, you know, Aganaga means living both sides. You are living as a Sefudi, you are living as Warudile. Now they used to call them our Sefudis. 
The nanny say for this, could you call this is say for this, our say for this. Our say for this, you know, our born again. Hallelujah. Why do they call them theirs? Because they are living like them. There must be, and the world knows, the nanny say for the people know our limits. They know what we have to do and what we, we don't have to do. Because the Bible says we are the light of the world. Those nanny say for the people very well or know that what they, they are doing is not right. They don't expect a born again believer to do it. Because what they are doing is not right. So when you live doing such a thing, and the nanny self the person knows he is doing something not right, and you as a child of God, you keep doing it, thinking you are doing what is right, then you will have to repent, dear. You will have to repent. Because according to Jesus, he is teaching that all the people will hate you. For his sake. That means you will not be doing what they like. Your life will not be that life they like. Your way of doing things will not be the way they like. So they hate you for that. They don't hate you because you, you are saved. They hate you because you are against what benefits them. That's what they call salvation. Now, you cannot be gay, living a gay lifestyle in a church, and you think the gay people will hate you. The world cannot hate you if you are living a gay lifestyle, if you are eating gay money, if you are getting gay funds. There is no way gay will hate you. You understand? The witches cannot hate you if you are not preaching against witchcraft. They cannot hate you. If you are not praying against their altars, they cannot hate you. If you can invite them to your pulpit and give them microphone to testify, give testimony. Now, which testimony really? If you can invite the witches and give them a microphone to preach, how will they hate you? They cannot. Now, there is a politician here who got an award. A Satanist award, it was a word with the eye of Horus, the eye of, of the Illuminati, that eye on the pyramid. So that award is not given to everyone. Not everyone receives such an award. You understand? So these people, this guy was given an award of such uh, a level. And now you find such a person given a microphone to preach in the church. How do you say such a person will hate that church? And how do you say you are not one with them? Now, if a gay woman makes a collab in a song with a pastor or with a believer, with a born again singer, with a gospel artist, tell me, when will that gospel art, uh, artist do things that may upset the, the gay guy? You understand? Tell me, how will that person, the, the, the gospel artist, preach against gayism when he is doing collab with the gay people? Can you understand? So this is what the Bible is talking about, that there must be a difference between us and the people of the world. Uh, Bible says, but whoever will endure to the end will be saved. So through these persecutions, through these oppositions, we, we shall have to endure. In this generation, if you preach the true gospel, you will have to, end, to endure persecution because you are stopping people from benefiting from their thing. That's why you find that some churches are now personal. They belong to individuals, so it is their thing. But when they persecute you in this city, flee into another. For verily I say to you, you shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. Now, I don't know when, whether when we read these scriptures, what it comes in our mind. Jesus is saying, they cannot love you 
if they hated me. If you are preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, you can not be loved by all men if Jesus was hated by some men. Because a disciple cannot be above his master. There is nothing good you are doing for the world that makes you eat to love you more than it loved Jesus. Do not think Jesus was doing bad things in his generation that made people to hate him. He fed the poor just as we do. He preached the gospel of love just as we do. When it came to truth concerning eternal life, he spoke the true word of his father. And the world began to hate the truth of his father because the devil who is in the world hates the truth of the father. So Satan now tires of people to hate the truth that Jesus has brought. How much better are we? Are we servants of the devil that he is not feeling anything against the... By the way, let me tell you, when you preach a gospel that does not hurt the devil, then you are not a preacher. You are a false preacher. You belong to him. If you are preaching, does not pierce the devil, does not pinch the devil, does not put red paper in the eyes of the devil, you know, you don't prepare the devil, then you know you belong to him. Who is giving you that gospel that you preach that does not affect Satan? Who has given it to you? Hallelujah. It is enough for the disciple that he should be as his master and the servant at, at, as um, at his Lord. If, if they have called the master of the house, Baruzabab, how much more shall they call them of his household? Jesus is just saying, if you belong to a household, there is no way you will be different from that household. That's why I always tell people that when you pray from an Okarutic church, there is no way you will say you are not Kalutic. You are followers as long as you were in a follow church. As long as you are sitting under a follow pastor, you are a follow yourself. You were a follow believer. A follow believer, Bible calls him a follow brethren. A follow brethren is a brother who is under the follow spirit. So when you are seated and the follow spirit, you are praying from some of these churches that are known to be followers. My dear, you are, you are under the devil. You belong to the devil. And when you die, you go to hell. So now is the time that you should not be named among them. Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. And I will, I, I will accept you. That's what is written in the Second Corinthians. That come out from among them, chapter 6, I think, those last verses. Come out from among them, and be separate, says the Lord, and I will accept you. So time is now that we should come out from among them. If your church preaches a gospel that does not pinch the devil, then my dear, you are one with the devil. Okay? If the preaching of your church is just of enjoyment, you slay around and receive miracles. My dear, your spirit is not safe. Your spirit is not safe at all. So you need to go back to the foundation of salvation. The foundation of our salvation was that uh, that um, uh, depends on the preaching of Jesus. The foundation of our salvation was the preaching of Jesus. And in Jesus' preaching, he said there will be a difference between you and the world. And the world will hate you to the extent that they will want to kill you. Why? Because you are destroying their system. When, whenever, listen, whenever the true gospel is preached, it destroys the systems of the world. It has power. That's why Paul says, I, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God. So when you preach the true gospel, it carries power. It carries power that destroys the kingdom of the devil. So that's why Satan will stir up his people to hate you. The witches will hate you. The false prophets will hate you. You know, politicians will hate you because you are against their systems. Bible says, fear them not. Fear them not, therefore. 
for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be known. Now, when we preach the true gospel, Jesus begins to give us revelation. To do revelation is lost from the church because the truth of our salvation has been hid. What I tell you in the darkness, speaking the light, Jesus said, what I tell you, that is what you should speak. Church, listen to this scripture. The Bible is saying, what I tell you in the darkness, speaking light, and what you hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops. So we are not meant to preach the gospel that pleases the people. We are not meant to preach Christ. We are meant to preach what Christ tells us. We are meant to preach the, what Christ told us. So let us stop preaching Christ and begin to preach the gospel of Christ. Can somebody pick me? Preaching Christ would not be bad, but that is not what he wants. Christ doesn't want you to preach him. He wants you to preach his gospel. So the gospel of Jesus is here. He says, what I tell you in the ear, stand on the house top and preach it. So preachers, come back to the foundation of, of Jesus. Because Jesus did not tell us to preach him. He told us to preach what he tells us. Can you understand somebody? So check into the scripture and they know what Jesus told us and they preach that. Okay? Learn what Jesus told us and they preach that. Romans 12 verse 2 says, Be not conformed to this world, but ye be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove that which is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Now, children of God, when you are to preach the gospel, you should not be conformed to the standards of this world. If you are to stay in this salvation and stay on the true foundation of salvation, okay, you should not be founded on the systems of the world. You must be contradictory to the systems of the world such that you show them what to do. You become a light unto them. You become a light unto them. Now, when they tell you don't be conformed to the world, what comes in your mind? These scriptures are no longer preached in the churches because these churches don't belong to Jesus. The foundation of Christ tells you that you are different from the world. And Jesus himself said, if you were of the world, the world would love it his own. But because you are not of the world, the world will hate you. You understand? So do not be conformed to the standards of this world. Apostle Paul preached that gospel. Today we are forcing the gospel that Paul did not preach. We are interpreting the preachings of Paul differently. He told us not to conform to the world. And now you can go into John and also read chapter 2. First John chapter 2, verse 15 to 20. Love not the world. The Bible is saying love not the world. In other words, don't love the thing, the, the, the way the world did that things. Do not admire the way the world did that things. When they are wearing naked, you should be different. When they are plating, you should be different. When they are draining, you should be different. When they are bleaching, you should be different. When they are bribing, you should be different. When they are embezzling, you should be different. Believers who are in the government uh, offices, you should be different. You should be different. Money is good. The church needs money. Right now, we need five million for the radio work. But my dear, that even if you would get that five million in one day and bring it such that we go and do go this work on the radio and the money is coming through bribe or through uh, swindling, embezzling, you know, you should leave that money. Though the church is in need, don't take it. Can you understand? Though the church is in need, don't take the money. Because according to Christ's foundation, that is what the world does. So for you, you should not do as the world does. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If a man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the, the flesh, and looking nice, appearing good, you know what, looking whatsoever, 
the lust of the eyes, the lust of the 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 the, the, uh, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, are not of the Father, but of the world. That's why, as a church, we condemn these things. We tell people not to do them because they are not of God; they are of the world. And the Bible says, "And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that does the will of God." abide this forever now the will of god is that we should be different from the world that is the will of god the will of god is that a believer should look different from the world should live different from the world should act different from the world you understand should handle things different from the world so that is the will of god when you do the will of god you are different from the world. Now look at what the world does, how they dress, how they live, how they act, how they enjoy life, the things they do. Do the opposite, you are doing the will of God. Now some people ask you, how do I do the will of God? How will I know the will of God? Now I have given you a very simple formula of doing God's will. Look into the world, see how the world does their things, then you do the opposite. You are already doing God's will. Will you again wonder how to do the will of God? Just do that. Very simple. Very simple. You look at how gay people dress, dress opposite. Look at how prostitutes dress, dress opposite. You look at, you know, how government people get their money through bribing, through embezzling, through, uh, you know, like, um, those in road works and whatsoever, they get money instead of doing standard things, they do fake things and they build their themselves. Do opposite. When you find that people are not faithful in the world, do opposite. Now that's the will of God. Very simple. In other words, the will of God is doing the opposite of what the world does. You understand? The Bible is saying he does, does the will of God, abide this forever. Little children, it is the, latter, the last time. And as you have heard that the Antichrist will come, and even now there are many Antichrists, thereby we know that it's the last time. So there are many Antichrists, they are meaning, there are many people who are pretending to be serving Christ, yet they are fighting Christ. That's what they call by Antichrist. There are very many people, even the Bible says they are there. Today, if you ask the church, they will tell you they are not there. Uh, those are just God's servants. You don't need to judge. But, uh, but John is judging. John is saying there are people who are pretending to be Christies when they are fighting Christ. They come preaching Christ, but they are fighting Christ. You understand? In the process of preaching Christ, they are destroying the foundation of Christ. So they went out from us, but they were not of us. You see, Paul is, I mean, John is saying, these people once served with us. They were like a saved like us. They, have, they might have been with us, but they are not ours. So though they, are, though they were with us, they are no longer with us, and they are no longer ours. That's, that's what the church has to do. Church, we need to come out and disown these people who, who come in the name of the Lord to fight and destroy the foundation of the church. The disciples did that. The apostles of Jesus did that. We see John here saying, uh, they went from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest. I want you to look at this verse. They went out that they may be made manifest that they were not all of us. Now, John believes in exposure. He says when these people went out from us, they did that, that they may be known that they were not of us, that they may be made manifest, that they may be exposed that they were not of us. So exposure, the gospel of exposure is not a sin. We are not judgmental if we expose some people who are not of Christ. 
but they are pretending to be of Christ. It is not a, a, a judge, judgmentation or it is not a confrontation if we expose the people who are destroying the foundation of Christ, pretending to be building it. We are not sinning. But here have an action from the Holy One, and here know all things. Now, according to John, we who have the action of the Holy One, the Holy One is the Holy Spirit. We who have the action of the Holy Spirit, we should be knowing all these things. We should be knowing that there are people who pretend to be serving our Jesus when they are not really serving him. That's what the Bible tells us. So children of God, I want to end here. I pray God bless you in Jesus' my name. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that as your children listen to this message, that they may be edified. I pray that you touch someone who's a soul through this message, O oh Lord. Help someone to know the truth, to walk according to the truth, to live according to the truth. Oh, Jesus, cause your children to love the truth, that they may look for it. Cause your people who are still in a compromise to hate the garment stained by evil, that they may love to walk with you. Those who are still in the house of Baruzabab, may you cause them, Lord, to come out of the house of Baruzabab, that they may belong to the house of Christ. In the name of Jesus, don't leave people into occultism. Those who are in the churches of gay people, may you cause them to come out of the gay churches. Those who are braiding, those who are pinning the ears, those who are piercing the noses, those who are doing whatever they are doing intentionally, that, you know, intentionally, but camouflaging and confusing the children of God, Lord my God. May you expose them to the least point that even the youngest in the salvation will know that these people are evil and they shall run from them in the name of Jesus. Whoever sold their souls to the devil for riches, for wealth, for, for fame, for, for power, for anointing, for prosperity, and all that, oh Lord God Almighty, expose them to the least point that your people will escape. And may you cause them, Lord, to, to fear the lake of fire, to fear the subtraction that is to come, that they may come out of evil and live for you, oh Lord Jesus. And if possible, you will use them again. Father, I pray that your spirit may move in this country and in the outside the countries and cause people to repent. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen.